All right, so far we have been only in Blender, but if you want to use Blender just as a camera tracker, then of course you need some way to export the track and the footage. Or if you don't use lens distortion, then you don't need to export the footage, of course. So in that case, um, you want to be able to export the track to a different application. Now there are all kinds of applications where you would, might want to use it. For example, like uh, other 3D programs like Maya or Max or Cinema 4D, or like just compositing applications like After Effects. And I can't go through all of them, but I just want to, as an example, just want to use Cinema 4D and After Effects, because these are the two that I happen to have installed on my computer as well. So first of all, if you want to export this whole thing to, for example, Cinema 4D. I think that the workflow can also be applied to Maya and other applications. Then you can export the whole thing as an FBX file. So when you have your finished camera solution here, maybe even with some proxy objects like this, oh, maybe not the grease pencil though, so these objects here and the camera and the markers. Now you don't even have to bake the animation of the camera, which you could do by going to the constraints and bake this to an F curve so that you have really keyframes for every frame, but you don't even have to do that. So you can just select the camera and the object that you want to export or just export everything, then go to file and then export. And now you have different options and the one that should be enabled by default is Autodesk FBX. So use Autodesk FBX, which works pretty good in most cases. And that will launch the file browser from where you can export to FBX. Then here below all these panels, you have the export FBX options. For example, you can limit that to just the selected objects in your scene, or in our case, we don't have that many objects, so I just export everything. Then you can set the scale, and especially in the case of Cinema 4D, I think that is helpful because um, the preset scale or the default scale in Cinema 4D is very, is, I think it's centimeters. So if you have the scale at one, then it would be a very tiny scene. So scaling it up can help. Also, some applications use different axes. So in Blender, the default up axis is the Z axis, but that will now be changed to Y. So you can adjust that if you want. Then modifiers, if you have any, they can be applied. You can enable or disable smoothing, but of course for the camera animation, the only thing that really matters is the include animation buttons. Okay, now in theory, we could just export everything. However, because since a few weeks, Blender has a new mesh system, the object export is for some reason broken. It will be fixed, I'm sure about that, but currently there is an error in the script. So the only thing that we can export now is the camera. But in theory, and I'm sure that as soon as Blender 2.63 is out, uh, it will also be possible to export the meshes. But for now, um, you have to select the camera, go to File, Export, FBX, then choose only the selected objects, and then you can export that to FBX. And when I now go to Cinema 4D, then I go to File, Open, then go to that FBX file that we have just generated, and then click on Open, and just hit OK. OK, and that will then import the animated camera. So you have the animation here. So now all we have to do is to also set the correct render size, then uh, the background images, but unfortunately I'm not that familiar with Cinema 4D, so I can't do it. But um, since we have the camera here with the camera movement and everything, that should work. The only thing that you have to pay attention to is that you also, before you do that, that you export the undistorted images because the camera movement assumes that you have just straight lines in your footage. So if you would now put the original sequence in the background of the camera or the render, then you will have like not fitting features. So it would lead to errors.
So of course, just as we do in Blender for the composite and for the rendering, we have to use the undistorted images. So first, before we can do that, we would have to go to Blender and then in the compositor, put this, the undistorted images, into the composite output, like that, and then just render this, of course, with the correct size. So that's how you can export to other 3D applications. But there is also one application that is very popular and that is After Effects for compositing. So if you want to take advantage of the speed of After Effects and also all the nice presets, then of course you would have to somehow get the camera from Blender into After Effects. And for that we have a very nice script from Bartex Gurupa and he created that add-on that you have to enable here in the user preferences. So go here, user preferences, and then in the add-ons, go to the import export menu, and then here you can enable the export to After Effects add-on. And when you do that, then you can go to file, export, then After Effects, and just like with the FBX, you have now the options here, so you can include the animation or uh, only the selected objects. You can also uh, export the 3D markers, and I want to do that. So export to After Effects, and that will create the JSX file. And then in After Effects, I can go to the file menu, whatever it is called in English, and then in scripts, I can go to run script file and then open up that JSX. Yes, blend comp, that's all right. And now I have here the composition. I can double click that. And here now I can see all the 3D markers. Of course, what's missing is the footage. So I have to import that as well. So file import file, then go to that folder with the footage, open that, yes. And now I have to do one more thing before I can drag this into our composition, and that is to adjust the frame rate. Because here I have that composition from Blender set at 24 frames per second, because I didn't really care about setting the correct frame rate in Blender. But in After Effects, if you forget that, that will really lead to problems. So the Composition here is 24 frames per second, but the footage is actually at 29.97 frames per second. So that would be out of sync. So before I can use that, I have to right click, then interpret footage, set it to 24 frames per second so that it matches the Blender composition. And now I can drag that into the composition here. And if you play back this now, fits pretty nicely. The only thing that might lead to problems is that, of course, the original footage doesn't have the lens distortion. So if you have calculated lens distortion for the solution, then you have to first, just like as in the example before with Cinema 4D, you have to also export the undistorted footage and then import that. But once you have that, you can use all these After Effects null objects However, you can select in After Effects. I'm not an After Effects user, so I have really no idea how to use that exactly. But these objects can now be used to do some parenting with other footage, some effects or stuff like that. So that is how you can export from Blender to other applications.